Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Just yesterday, we got the news that San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk has officially requested a trade according to his camp, and it leads to a lot of speculation at with what the future for him looks like. Now, I went on record saying this yesterday. I don't believe that Ayuk is going to be traded this offseason. The 49ers are in a position where they just made the Super Bowl last year. They've made the NFC Championship in back-to-back years. And I feel like ultimately they are going to try and do absolutely everything they can to put themselves into the best possible position to win this year. They have a very expensive roster, and it's only going to continue to go up when Brock Purdy gets his contract extension. He is eligible for an extension next offseason, meaning they do still have two years of pretty cheap Brock Purdy play, and they are going to try and capitalize on that, and Ayuk is obviously a very important part of that. Not just from the pass catcher standpoint, where last year he did have 1,300 yards. He was one of the top players in the NFL in terms of yards per reception. But he is, I really do think, a team guy from a wide receiver where he is so unselfish in selling out on the routes where he's not the primary option. And he is one of the best blocking wide receivers in the NFL. And it does feel like sometimes that position can come with some diva-esque tendencies. Uh, I feel like the Steelers have probably been one of the prime examples of that over the past decade or so, where you have players calling out other players for not blocking for them and such. And Brandon Ayuk, you don't even have to worry about that. So... I think he's an impact player. The 49ers are going to hold on to him this year. From there is where the future becomes a little bit more murky because they're definitely going to have the possibility to sign him to a franchise tag and keep him around maybe for another couple years despite it being against his will. We'll see. Brandon Ayuk is one of the up-and-coming wide receivers in the NFL, and he wants to be solidified in his contract and his standing with the team. And even within the 49ers organization, I do think that Brandon Ayuk has wide receiver one potential, but he is, I would say, a second option behind Debo Samuel in a vacuum fully healthy. I think the argument to say that Ayuk is a better player than Debo isn't a great one and even after that you have Christian McCaffrey and you have George Kittle and all of these weapons around Brandon Ayuk as well and like I just said I do think that he is very unselfish but you have seen all of the cryptic messages he's been posting throughout the course of the offseason that he's unhappy with where he is currently standing with the organization he feels somewhat slighted and I think that a change is going to happen probably next offseason but in case anything were to develop this year I do want to talk about some teams that I think could be a really good fit for Brandon Ayuk the top two are contenders that have financial restrictions that would make a trade very difficult but I could very easily see Brandon Ayuk becoming a superstar with either the Baltimore Ravens or the Buffalo Bills now like I mentioned Financial handicaps are definitely obstacles in the way to make either one of these happen, but I think that Ayuk would be an unbelievable fit with the Ravens, where sort of similar to the 49ers, there are a couple other weapons around him, Zay Flowers, who they the Ravens are likely going to have to pay at some point that could make this deal another one of an obstacle to, you know, to make happen but Mark Andrews as well I know he had the injury last season but I think he's still going to be able to be a very solid version of himself and you know they just added Derrick Henry they're going to have a very lethal run attack as well that he could be a could be a um, you know massive point there Anthony comments Brandon Ayuk is in a great spot in his career he needs the 49ers and they need him 
It's interesting. I mean, I don't know if he necessarily needs them. I thought it was the perfect situation for him to grow up in. He was a lot more raw than a lot of scouts were expecting when he was coming into the NFL. We saw a slow start for him out of the gates, but now that he's arrived, I think he's ready to go. And again, playing in that type of a system with that offensive mind of uh, of Kyle Shanahan and having the options around him to not have the sole pressure of being this wide receiver with really high draft pedigree and finding his way into it. Now, he absolutely benefits from the fact that he doesn't get all of the sole attention from opposing defenses, but I think that he is going to get to a point where it doesn't matter if he is the number one option or not. He's still going to make plays. I love his route running. I think he has great athletic physical tools as well. So I think he'll succeed anywhere. Anthony also says if he gets traded, he goes to the Chiefs. That would be soul crushing for me. Just just because the Chiefs are already so good, adding Brandon Ayuk would just be, you know, I don't think the Chiefs would ever stop losing at that point. And obviously that's a little bit dramatic, but you know, that would be an incredible pickup for the Chiefs if they were able to make that happen. Maybe, you know, as Travis Kelsey's contract and career is probably coming to an end, they're going to have a salary number to, you know, fill in. And Brandon Ayuk could be something there. That would be very scary, especially with the addition of Xavier Worthy that they just took in the first round. I mean, you can't count anything out with Patrick Mahomes as well, but... Yeah, he would absolutely be the number one option for the Ravens. And I think that it would just be, I also think he would just look so cool in a Ravens jersey too, that I could get all behind that. One other contender that I did want to throw into the conversation, I think it's very unlikely, but I saw a little bit of love for it on social media and it had me thinking the Lions are an interesting spot as well. Now, they just paid Amon Ross St. Brown this offseason, so I would guess that it's pretty much off the table. They also just gave Goff a $50 million contract. They paid Penny Sewell as well. So they kind of already have their quarterback, left tackle, and wide receiver one all on these massive deals that I think it's very unlikely that Ayuk ends up in Detroit, but that is something I did want to just address at least would be fun, but I just don't see it happening. Um, but the Washington Commanders are also a team that has very much been talked about in terms of a Brandon Ayuk landing spot. I Ayuk spoke recently on the Pivot podcast playing, uh, talking about the contract situation with the 49ers. And he mentioned the commanders by name as the first team he would could see himself in outside of a 49ers jersey. He played with Jaden Daniels years ago at Arizona State. He has put out some not so cryptic messages that he has interest in playing with him once again. So the commanders are definitely worth looking into as well there if they are one of these young teams that could absolutely benefit from going out and paying a wide receiver one and having the connection there could definitely get excited about it but I would also throw maybe the Patriots the Panthers and the Chargers into that conversation Chargers out of that one is the one that I like the most as Anthony actually just mentions the Chargers as well on this list where I think that, that would be a really interesting fit because Justin Herbert has had talented receivers around him for sure throughout the beginning of his career, but obviously injuries and aging have been things that have gotten in the way there. They're now with Jim Harbaugh as the head coach. They are going into this new era and it seems like Harbaugh is typically more of a build up the offensive front front first with the line and more of a running game, but you're not going to spend big on a running back. They just used a first round draft selection on Joe Alt, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. So it seems like the wheels are already turning a little bit there. And now that the Chargers discarded so much of those bad salaries, they were able to get a lot of their stars on contract restructures that give them some more fle flexibility. I could definitely see them swing big at Ayuk and seeing a really nice fit there. But 
Anthony also mentions the Rams and the Jets. I had the Jets on my list. I also had the Raiders as a, you know, the Raiders and the Steelers as other ones you could at least throw into the conversation of teams that would likely spend big. The Jets are the team that I want to address first out of this list because obviously they feel like they are getting to a point with Aaron Rodgers that it's almost now or never. And I'm not sure how many years Aaron Rodgers has left. If Rodgers is done after this year and there isn't a clear future of the position for the Jets, I don't really want to see necessarily Brandon Ayuk end up there. But, you know, if the, if they end up having a young quarterback too, I mean, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world there. If the Jets were able to pull off a trade this season, I would be all for it. But again, I just don't think the 49ers are going to trade him until after at least this season. But Rams are an interesting one as well, actually. Having Ayuk going from a situation with Shanahan and then going within that own division to the rival of Shanahan in Sean McVay. I mean, that would be incredible scripting from the NFL of building up some sort of a rivalry together once again. But definitely... Um, Definitely one that I hadn't thought of in terms of the Rams. Curious what the future is going to look like with Matthew Stafford. Injuries have absolutely gotten in the way for him in, you know, I'd say, I would say two years ago, really. Last year, he looked great again, and hopefully he is able to stay on that same level of performance. I always do have a little bit of concerns when you're talking about the arm injuries with quarterbacks, but I like Stafford a lot, and I'm hoping that he is able to, you know, continue out the rest of his career strong. Um, we have shots below the belt saying the Chargers as well as the Cowboys have all the talent in the world to be great, but head coaching is atrocious. Not a huge Mike McCarthy fan. I was talking about that in the first segment as well. Not really in on McCarthy. It's going to be interesting because the Chargers, I mean, the, the Staley era there was just disastrous. I mean, you look at the three worst ways for your season to end, essentially, with the Chargers having it be the overtime game against the Raiders in his first season where he got too smart, called that timeout. If you remember, it was the last game of the season. The two teams tie. The char they both go to the playoffs. Staley got cute, ended up costing himself a playoff appearance there. Possibly. Don't know exactly what the Raiders were going to do. But blowing that massive lead to the Jaguars in the 2022-23 playoffs. And then last year he was fired after, I believe it was the beatdown that they suffered to the hands of the Raiders. So, I mean, it... It, it was a terrible, terrible stretch there, I agree, for the Chargers coaching-wise. Jim Harbaugh, I think, can build a culture there, and I have expectations in the long run for the Chargers. Going to be curious to see how fast they choose to act on it. Anthony says, why don't you think the Chiefs would do it? Because they don't really have good receivers. The only receiver, quote-unquote, they have is Travis Kelsey, but he is a tight end. Brandon Ayuk does make a lot of sense. And again, with Kelsey, he just signed the new contract this year, but I don't think it extends out all that long. So they could probably find a way to financially make it happen of... Ayuk almost absorbs that salary cap spot on their table for Kelsey when Kelsey ultimately decides to retire. I mean, the Chiefs are absolutely in play. It's it From a fit perspective, I think it definitely makes sense. It's just something, personally, I would prefer not to see. I don't hate the Chiefs like other people do, necessarily. Um, I respect everything about that organization and the way that they've chosen to run. But, I mean, Patrick Mahomes just can't keep getting away with having all of these incredible options. So, I mean, I don't have a great explanation for why I would prefer the Chiefs to not go get Brandon Ayuk. It could definitely be a great fit for them, but we'll have to... We'll have to see. There are a lot of options on the table. Again, I don't think that the 49ers end up working out a long-term deal with Ayuk. Now, it's definitely still possible. I would rather pay 
Ayuk, then Debo Samuel, I think, over the next five or so years. But they're going to have a lot of decisions to make. Obviously, also just took a wide receiver in the first round of this year's draft in Ricky Pearsall. So they got options on the table. And Shanahan, I think, is always going to... I just trust him to make the right moves in regards to offensive personnel for the most part. And that was displayed by having Brock Purdy step in and be exactly what they needed at basically a $500,000 salary a year or something along those lines. But going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. But we're going to be now continuing on with our previews for all 32 NFL teams for the upcoming season. Today we have the my own personal team, the New England Patriots, a little bit of a bottom of the barrel team that is going into this new era. So we'll be breaking down the key storylines ahead and the fresh start with the organization and whether or not that it is going to lead to any sort of success this season. But before we get into that, we're going to be taking a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 